Well, hello to you, to you, and you all the way in the back there. This is AutoLine Exclusives, and I'm Sean McRoy. Today, we're going to be talking all about solid state batteries, and that's because my guest is Doug Campbell, the CEO and co-founder of Solid Power. Doug, I want to thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Sean. Man, there is so much news coming out about solid state batteries these days, and I think people have just got to be knowing when's this stuff going to be coming out. And uh, I think you guys have got a big announcement coming up here, right? Yeah, we do. Um, so uh, what what is what is imminent is getting what we refer to as our um, EV prototype cell line. Uh, operational and what that is producing is um, our full-scale cell product so literally to the you know dimensions capacity specifications uh, that would be suitable for um, for the actual in vehicle use um, and that's that in of itself is exciting but um, perhaps what's not as obvious to your your viewers and listeners is that to really start the formal automotive qualification process you've got to do it on your full scale a product you can't do it on a subscale product and so this is a big deal for us um it, it's installed it's operating um you know we're gonna take you know some time to sort of debug it um and then start walking in the the performance metrics that we've managed to achieve on some of our other production capabilities but yeah it's uh it's 2022 is shaping up to be a very exciting year for solid power and you've already got some uh, great companies that have hopped on board with you guys. Can you talk a little bit about uh, who's joined on? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously we'd be nowhere without without that market pull. Um, and in our case, we're working with two automotive OEM partners, um, Ford uh, and BMW. We've been working with both of those automakers for for a number of years. Um, the relationship really, really strengthened rough, you know, basically this time last year when both <clears throat> both automakers stepped in with a very sizable investment into the company, um, but also kicking off a very formal automotive qualification program. So we're really excited about uh, those two automakers. And then um, what's unique about us is we do not endeavor to be a cell producer sort of long term, although we are certainly a cell producer today. Um, over time, we, we anticipate stepping out of that business and focusing really on being a material producer, most notably the producer of our solid electrolyte, which we believe is the most critical component um, going into a solid state battery. And so what that means is that we need a partner um, to achieve commercialization. And, um, you know, we kicked off last year um, a cooperation with SK Innovation uh, over in Korea. Uh, certainly don't want to state that because of that relationship, that will be our commercialization partner. Um, that, the, you know, obviously the relationship has an eye towards that. Um, and hopefully we'll progress in that direction. But yeah, it's it's um, getting getting a, a leading cell maker like an SK Innovation on board was a very big deal for us. So this pilot line that you've got coming online, uh, is that for testing purposes that will be going into vehicles? When might you start testing uh, those uh, cells in vehicles? Yeah, so it is, it is primarily intended to uh, essentially validate, qualify. Um, the product for um, for vehicle use, um, and even that in of itself requires some some fairly decent volumes. When you're when you're supporting an A sample validation phase, you're typically delivering single digit thousands of cells. So these are not onesies and twosies, but single digit thousands, and oftentimes that can double when you get into a B sample validation phase. So certainly, you know, we're we're looking we're looking at some non trivial um, cell deliverables in terms of when we anticipate an in vehicle demonstration. Um, you know, that gets into the information that I really can't share. The reason I can't share is not my information to share. Um, but, you know, I can assure you there are some conversations, you know, to that end. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, you talk about the electrolyte uh, that's going in these batteries, and that's really what they're all about. Can you give people that maybe don't have quite a full grasp of what solid yeah. state batteries are and, and how they differ from, say, you know, your typical lithium ion? Sure, sure. So let's, if you don't mind, I'll just start with the basics. So, you know, what is, right what are the, what are the components in a lithium ion battery, you know, today? Um, you've got the two electrodes, cathode, cathode and anode, um, positive and negative electrodes, respectively. Um, you then have a polymer separator that, um, as the name implies, separates the cathode and anode. Otherwise, if those come into contact with one, with one another, that leads to what's called a short circuit and, you know, some safety uh, issues could suddenly arise. And then kind of in, infused throughout all of that is this liquid electrolyte. 
um, that you see in today's lithium ion batteries. And that really allows ions to conduct from, from point A to point B. In a solid state battery, uh, sort of the same, same construction. Uh, I like to think of it as like an Oreo cookie. Um, so you've got your, your two electrodes, your, your cathode and anode, just like you do in today's lithium ion. But then you have this, this separate layer in between that we refer to as an electrolyte separator layer. In effect, serves dual purpose. It is both an uh, ion conductor, but also an ele uh, electronic uh, insulator. Um, and so basically what you've done in a solid state battery is you've replaced that liquid electrolyte with this solid electrolyte, and that eliminates both the liquid electrolyte, but also that um, porous polymer separator, such that you end up with this sort of three component system, hence the Oreo cookie um, descriptor. And that in and of itself shouldn't get you all, all that excited, but it's really what solid state enables. And I like to describe the benefits of solid state as being akin to a, a three-legged stool, and the, and the three legs all sort of contribute to the overarching value proposition of you know, increasing the performance and lowering the cost. A future EV. So if we talk about the three-legged stool, we'll talk about first energy. So it, it enables higher energy and it does so through the use of, let's just say, non-traditional electrode chemistries that otherwise are not considered to be viable with a traditional liquid or gel. The most popular one these days is uh, lithium metal as an anode, and that's certainly something we're doing. Uh, however, I think what, you know, what we put out in the public is that our first product is actually going to be a high content silicon. And when I say high content, I mean north of 50% by volume, which right now is, is not considered to be feasible with a traditional liquid electrolyte. The second leg of that three-legged stool is safety. Um, the, you know, we're all aware of the safety issues surrounding lithium ion, certainly no shortage of, of videos on YouTube where you can see cells going into thermal runaway when subjected to abuse condition. Really the bad actor there is the, the liquid electrolyte. That is what serves as the ignition source. Because we have eliminated that ignition source, we now have a cell that will still fail under those abuse conditions, but we believe in a very non-catastrophic manner, meaning instead of a thermal runaway on your hands, you have simply have a dead brick. And that obviously is attractive from um, uh, improving product reliability, but where it becomes immensely powerful for vehicle applications is it uh, can dramatically reduce the likelihood of very expensive product recalls, which of course we're seeing in the news. And then finally, the third leg of the stool is high temperature stability, leading to the, we believe a strong potential to eliminate pack cooling. A good rule of thumb is that could see uh, about a 10% cost savings at the pack level. So basically I like to think of high temperature stability and safety amounting to substantially simpler battery packs, which ultimately drives down uh, the dollar per kilowatt hour at the PEC level. So the energy, those two other legs that I mentioned, all delivering a greater range vehicle uh, and one that is safer and lower cost. Doug, you kind of alluded to there something that I've always had a question about solid state batteries is that it sounds like there's a ton of different chemistries that you could use within solid state as there mm -hmm. is with lithium ion for cathodes for the electrolyte mm -hmm. itself. Um, is there any sort of materials that might work better with lithium ion that don't work with solid state or any you know other way around nothing that we have found now i don't want to claim that we have done development around every commercially available you know cathode active material or anode active material but thus far we have not found um, a material that doesn't appear to be compatible in a in a solid state form Again, not to say that there isn't, it's just that we haven't yet discovered one. And then another thing that's going on in batteries, especially right now, is materials. Material prices are shooting up, so oh, yeah. people are trying to get rid of the materials that are super expensive. Makes a yep. ton of sense. Is yep. the same kind of thing going on with solid state as well? For us, it certainly is. So with our first generation product, which is using the, the same industry standard nickel, in cobalt containing cathode active material, we will be subject to those same supply constraints. However, your point is very well taken and this is an, an area that I, I am very, very familiar with. And this is where some of the things that are happening over in the R&D side of uh, solid power are incredibly exciting. We have a, a fairly extensive program uh, going right now, uh, developing a non-cobalt, non uh, nickel containing cathode active material. Interestingly enough, it was the research around that material at the University of Colorado Boulder that led to the founding of solid power. Uh, for a period there, we put that material on a shelf 
because our customers were wanting a more um, a more conventional, quote unquote, conventional cathode active material, in our case, an NMC. However, these issues surrounding the cost of NMC, which has gone up dramatically in the last couple of months and years, um, have caused ourselves and our partners to, you know, go back and revisit that material. It is uh, incredibly low cost material. I am not exaggerating when I say if we can make it commercially feasible, we could see upwards of a 90 to 95% reduction in the cost of the cathode active material, which by the way, is the number one cost driver for lithium ion today. And that is simply because, as I jokingly used to say, the material is cheap as dirt because it's literally dirt. Um, it's very, very earth abundant. So stay tuned. It is R&D, not making claims as to when you'll see this in, in commercially available cells. Um, but we're, we're pretty excited about it. And that material's performance as a, as a rechargeable battery is unique to solid state. It does not work as a rechargeable in a traditional liquid or gel system. Very cool stuff, very cool. Yeah. One other thing I hope you can help clear up for me is something that I read is, I'll read about partial solid state or full mm -hmm. solid state battery. What's the difference between those? Because it seems like the ones that are partial solid state are the ones that we hear about are coming out in like 2023, yep. 2025. And then the full yep. solid state are the ones we hear about more towards the end of the decade. Yeah. So what what a partial or quasi or I, I call them hybrid. Um, what they do is they combine elements of solid state with elements of, um, you know, traditional lithium ion. So, for example, many groups may have a solid separator. Um, but they may include a liquid or a gel electrolyte in the cathode and or anode layer. That basically is the definition of a hybrid system. And, you know, its benefits are, um, and this comes back to my three-legged stool, certainly one of those legs, you know, assuming they're successful, uh, I, they can claim improvements in energy over today's lithium ions. But that's really where the benefits stop because of their inclusion of that liquid and gel. Uh, they're going to still be subject to the same safety and high temperature stability concerns that, that plagues today's lithium ion. So I do think hybrid systems are worthy of development, um, but really solid state is, is in our opinion, the true, um, the true home run solution. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, no, thank you for clearing that up for me because mm -hmm. uh, I, I see yep. it all the time and it's always like, yep. well, I'm, I, I think I know what it means, but you know, better yeah. to get it from the, the expert. <laughs> <laughs> So yep. I'm curious too, you know, uh, with battery packs these days, we're seeing some pretty large packs, 100, 200 kilowatt hours in some cases. Where do you see this market going? You know, just just <laughs> asking Doug, I'm not asking the CEO of Solid Power, I'm asking Doug, where do you kind of see this going? Do you see us eventually maybe right sizing to a smaller size pack or how do you see it? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, I guess that that question is a little bit above my pay grade because I'm not the CEO of Ford or, or BMW, but uh, your, your point well taken. So this is Doug Campbell, you know, U.S. citizen. Um, I think we will see a right size. I think that, um, you know, range anxiety, uh, you know, as well as quick charge, I think those things are going to be the concerns around those are going to going to go away, especially as we see charging systems deployed. Um, you know, I've been driving an EV for a year and a half. I probably visited a, a quick charger a handful of times. Well, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have my own home um, with a 220 installed in my in my garage. And so as I call it, there's my there's my infinite gas station. I mean, my, my tank's full every morning. I plug it in. Um, I think that and, and it, I think it's also market dependent. I think over in Europe, range anxiety is not nearly as big of a deal because they don't drive as far. Everything's a lot closer. Here in the United States, as you're seeing, you know, some of the, the trucks and SUVs as they're starting to talk about pushing 500 miles, I'm not sure if more than 500 miles is, is, is really necessary. Uh, that's, that's the opinion of Doug Campbell. Um, so take that for what it's worth. <laughs> no, no, no. I always appreciate getting people's perspective on the, the market and where the industry may be headed. So, yeah. so very yeah. cool. But Doug Campbell from Solid Power, I really want to thank you for your time today. Really interesting to see what the company's doing with this pilot cell line and eventually wanting to provide the electrolyte to automakers for, for their batteries. It, it's cool stuff. And I'm sure you've got more coming down the road. So I'm sure we'll be talking again sometime in absolutely. the future. So. Thanks for having me, Sean. And absolutely stay tuned. Yeah, definitely will. And thanks for everyone out there tuning in to watch this video if you like it. Please comment, subscribe. We always appreciate it and uh, have a great day.